Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Stefan Willig. I'm the director of the Institute of Social Medicine, Epidemiology and Health Economics at Charité University Hospital in Berlin. And it is my great pleasure to present to you a lecture on music and medicine. I would like to congratulate the organizers of this Congress to put together such interesting program. And it is my distinct pleasure to be a participant and would like to thank you very much for the invitation. Now, let me start by sharing my screen. Music and medicine, the relationship between both fields and the possible value of music in medicine. That is my topic for the next 45 minutes. Now, starting with the question where the medicine also appears in music is tempting and attractive. There is, in fact, for example, many operas where doctors appear on stage, like in Donizetti, L'Elysir d'Amore, where a doctor named Dul Camara appears and brings his healing medication. But the relationship between both fields starts much earlier. Already in the Bible, we can read, whenever the evil spirit from the Lord came upon King Saul, David took his harp and played. Then Saul was relieved and better, for the evil spirit departed from him. So harp playing with healing power. In the ancient world, the philosopher Pythagoras claimed that inner life, chaotic inner life, could be regulated with music. Healing was also described as re-establishing harmony by Platon and Aristotle even referred to musical catharsis. In the Middle Ages, body and soul were together a harmonic entity in analogy to music. Music at that time was actually part of the sub subjects to be studied at medical school and music was also used as therapy for various diseases. For example, the tarantella dance for tarantula bites. Now the 18th and 19th century, that's when medicine changed tremendously and developed into what you could consider modern medicine. There was the new dualism, body on the one hand, soul on the other hand, and music therapy lost it its importance. However, music therapy was continuously applied and used in psychiatrical disorders. It was only in the 1950s when music therapy started to become quite interesting again. You could consider these times as a renaissance of music therapy. First, there were the Mozart effect studies at universities in California, students, uh, were exposed to Mozart music or not, 
and then their performance and intelligence tests was assessed and the Mozart students appeared to provide better results. There was great excitement about these findings. However, they were, had never been really, have never been reproduced. So there is still scientific debate whether that's true or not. But at least it helped opening the field. In addition, there were more scientific studies of music and immediate physiological effects. And I will show you later what I mean by that. Also the imaging techniques, radiologic ima imaging techniques and uh, neurologic image, image, imaging techniques um, provided a new basis to observe which fields in the brain are affected by what kind of music. And integrative medicine, the way we perceive it today, that is putting together conventional medicine and complementary medical methods, of course, is also uh, open with respect to music and other arts forms. The conventional model of social medicine shows the main influences on health. There's on the one hand genes and biology, then there is psychosocial factors, the environment plays a role, and of course the healthcare system is important in determining health. However, there is more uh, aspects to it that we are familiar with, like the risk factors between biology and psychosocial, psychosocial factors, then climate issues, educational issues, individualized medicine. So there is further factors contributing to what's considered health. And you could also look at issues like music, religion, ethnology, that apparently 